Hi there, keen traders. Uh, what an exciting day. Capping off an exciting week. We had the ECB on deck today, and Draghi left everything unchanged. But in the press conference, we did have a bit of fireworks. And in the press conference, basically, deflation was just uh, reiterated to be a concern. And this has led to a push down in the Euro USD. I was getting a little bit nervous because my stop was up here at 136.42. And bam, we pushed all the way back to the 135.50 level. And there's a few things stopping that pair at that 135.50 level. One, we have this ascending trend line that the pair has skillfully climbed higher since last summer and there was our test of that trend line and we could very well see a wedge here a lot of a lot of traders are talking about going short at the 137.70 level uh, right in there and I think if you run an ascending trend line from the year to date high, and the yearly highs um, it comes out with a level around there, but I'm not concerned with that. And the 100 day moving average is also, I believe, right around 135.55. So, what we have is in all reality, our stop should still, because we don't really have an, uh, something, an impressive push lower, our stop should still be at this 136.75 level. But, you know, honestly, I just don't want to take that risk uh, with the data coming out tomorrow. And if we do get a spike up there, maybe we can go short again. We'll have to see. So, what we're going to do here is we see that we have the, the pair uh, consolidating in this range. We need either a break of this trend, which we're either going to get tomorrow, or we'll probably get stopped out with non-farm payroll. Um, so that's how it's going to go. If we get a break, then we move our stops down to that level, and then we look to add on Monday, Tuesday for a bigger move down towards 133, and then hopefully down towards the 131 level. Um, as you can see, the pair, though, did bounce quite well off this 135.55 level, and now we're just consolidating here. Now let's take a look at the Swiss franc. The Swiss franc, obviously, we all know the story. We missed, I missed the entry right here at 190.15. That was my actual entry. I think it only came down to 190.19. Uh, and now we're just waiting for a chance to get into it. Still looking for a push lower. Entry is at 190.44, I believe, or 190.40. Uh, we'll see if that triggers. Um, I'm not sure if it, if it actually does trigger tonight. Might not take it uh, head and on farm payroll, but we'll see. Uh, and um We'll look for a push higher. Uh, a push. We're still looking for a continued push higher. First target would be the 92.50 level, and now we definitely have solid support from this this level right here. So what we're going to have to watch is uh, we're going to watch the price action here, look for a break of this high to really get us going. Basically, we don't have an inside day, but we have a really slow, slow, slow day going on in that pair. Great Britain USD, same thing. I did say if we see a push back up towards that 164.80 level, it would look compelling. Well, we did receive that level, but it really wasn't nothing. It wasn't anything worth writing home about. Uh, the level, I think the buy into this pair would be at what 165.06, I said. And I also have that uh, harmonic setup that I've been keeping my eyes on at the 164.40 level. Let's go take a look at that actually. Uh, layouts, and we'll see that. Um, <clears throat> I didn't go to the right layout. You can see that. Uh, that it is interesting the way that that is playing out in the uh, Great Britain. You can see that. Um, for some reason it's not on here. Just give me a second. I'll just put it. I'll just create the chart for us. As you guys definitely have noticed, that uh, computers. I'm, I'm. I'm actually very good with computers. I was just making uh, this program work for me. It always gives me a hassle. All right. So the uh, Great Britain USD. You can see that we have a pretty nice. Uh, uh, butterfly pattern showing up here where we had a push down lower then we had a push up to the 0.68 fib a reverse and I think that went down uh, to the 0.86 and now we're looking for an extension and the real first entry could be all the way down here at 165.10 between 165.28 I want to get in at 165.40 just to limit my losses looking for a push back down on the targets would be well documented here at 163.76 and then 163.37 so we're going to watch this this is a compelling move it's an interesting pattern pattern and it's pretty easy to see. Uh, so we'll see if we uh, get that continued push higher and it would also cons uh, coincide with the support and resistance zone that we have in that pair. Now let's go back to the um, 
the majors and just take a look. The uh, New Zealand, we all know by now, is in this triangle. We had a nice pushback and went up to test the top of the triangle around 83, and then it went down to 82.50. I mean, that's what we're calling a nice move right now. It's a 50 pip move. Uh, so we're going to have to watch that to see what we can get on there. Uh, but this range is still in play. We need a break of that range to really get interested. Break of the 83. We have 84 in the bottom. Break of the bottom. We don't really have that much play there in the bottom. Yen, this guy can make you fall asleep right now. Um, above 103.75, this is well documented, favoring a push up to the 1.272 at 111. And I could be saying almost the same exact trade in the Aussie. This is a pullback to the 50 fib to the T. Then we had that reverse back, almost down 100 pips. We get a break in this with the first logical target would be that 50 uh, that 1.2 extension and where is that going to play us to let's see let's take a look that gets us down around the 8370 level so that's just something to keep in mind for that cross um, and we're not getting much action in the uh, JPY in the JPY players or the odd odd pairs, and that has just basically left the stacker. I mean, the uh, 50 fib trade sideline, which has been the case for about the last month. Uh, um, and that is it right now. Uh, we'll check back. Not doing any uh, fib trades overnight. We're looking to hopefully get a break in that Swiss franc and get something going in the Great Britain for the stacker trades to uh, start playing out. Uh, volatility will pick up sooner or later. Normally it is right about this time, or it'll definitely be in the beginning of next week. Well, I can't say definitely be in the beginning of next week, but next beginning of next week. Like the first trades normally come in around the 10, 15, uh, larger swings, uh, 10 or the 15, so basically sometime next week. Uh, hopefully we're already in the beginning of one in the Euro USD. All right, everybody, that's it for now, and uh, have a good one. I'll post any harmonics if I see anything compelling. Uh, shoot up. Adios.